I have to admit that in the past I haven't been that consistent in keeping good bank records. Sometimes I forget to write down debit purchase amounts or the amounts of checks that I've written. I'm lucky that I've never bounced a check. It can't be that hard for a person to keep accurate bank records so that they can balance their checkbook. It must be very difficult for a business that takes in so many checks from customers and writes so many checks to pay bills. How do they do that? The short answer to your question is, they do it the same way that an individual does it. There are just more checks and deposits written, so the task takes much longer. Let's take a detailed look at this process now. Hello, I'm Leanne Sparr, and in this section we will discuss reconciliation, or reconciling a bank statement. We will specifically discuss the following objectives. We will know the importance of reconciling a checking account. We will reconcile a bank statement with a checkbook. We will list the outstanding checks and we will find the adjusted bank balance or current balance. Let's begin with a few definitions. Once a month, banks send their checking account customers a bank statement. This bank statement shows all deposits made during the period covered by the statement as well as all the checks paid by the bank and any automated teller machine, ATM, or debit card transactions. The process of checking the bank statement and the check register is called reconciliation. Checks that have been written but do not yet appear on the bank statement have not been paid by the bank as of the date of the statement. These unpaid checks are called checks outstanding. Now we're going to reconcile our checking account. Here we have our check register and our bank statement. So we're going to look in our check register and we're going to see that we have this check for $100.50 that is not included in our bank statement and we have the check for $315.62 that is not included in our bank statement and we have the check for $67.29 that's not included in our bank statement so we need you to write those down please. Also need you to make note of this deposit $830.75 that is not included in our bank statement. Now let's notice the balance in this bank statement is $6,380.86. Please make a note of it. We will enter these values here in our checks outstanding column we will enter check number 668 for $100.50. We will enter check number 670 for $315.62. And we will enter check number 671 for $67.29. We will now total those checks and get $483.41. $483.41. We will now transfer that to the total of checks outstanding right here, $483.41. The new balance from the bank statement we will need to enter on the first line, which is $6,380.86. And we will also enter the deposit that we made, $830.75. We will add those two numbers and we will have $7,211.61. We will subtract the outstanding checks that do not appear on our bank statement and we will have an adjusted bank balance of $6,728.20. Now let's go back to our checkbook and let's take a look at our checkbook balance. Make a note of that. Now we need 
to look at the fees that the bank has charged us here on our bank statement. These two fees total $94.85. And we also need to note one last thing, which is the interest that the bank has paid to us. The interest credit is a deposit for $22.48. Please make a note of that, and we will record these values in our check register. Our checkbook balance is $6,800.57. The total of the fees, $94.85. We subtract line 7 from line 6. We get $6,705.72. We add in the interest credit, which is $22.48. We add the interest credit to your balance, and we have $6,728.20. And so we have now reconciled your check register with your bank statement. In this section, we have discussed the reconciliation of check registers and bank statements. Now it's time for you to go and try some on your own.